Have you ever noticed that detective games are much more interactive than seer games? More people talk, less laziness, more exciting moments, closer calls, and you name it. You might not have linked it directly with these two roles, but in this video, I will tell you exactly why these roles dictate your game in different ways, as well as look at the eight other informers and see how they compare. Seer checks a player at night and gets their exact role. If they manage to survive, they can share this exact information with the village, either by exposing the team or, in the case of the seer, even their exact role. In this example, I check the junior werewolf and tell the village that aid is junior werewolf. If we look at the nature of this info, or in simple words, what is it that we are really saying here? Well, we are affirming the identity of a player. Hence, we can call the seer an affirmative informer. Now, let's take a look at the detective. The detective needs to select two players at night. When he did so, he will be seeing a sign in the boxes of the checked players, the equal sign or the not equal sign. The equal sign means that the two players in question are on the same team. The not equal sign means that they are not on the same team. As you can imagine, this on its own does not say who is good or even if anyone is good. Here I check 2 and 9 and they are not on the same team. I only know 3 things at this moment. They are not both werewolf, they are not both villager and at least one of them is bad. I do not know whether we have checked 2 solos, 1 solo and a werewolf, 1 solo and a villager or a werewolf and a villager. Hence when I share this piece of info I am basically waiting for a reaction. I hope the two players claim a role or even better that one of them can prove themselves by killing the other. Since I try to provoke a reaction, we call the detective a reactionary informer. It does not stop here though. Let's take a quick look at the other 8 roles and we find out that some actually offer even someone else. The analyst, aura seer, gambler and VO are affirmative informers too. Analyst and aura seer are like the seer but get auras instead of full roles, making them slightly more reactionary due to the unknown aura, which still has a plethora of possible teams and roles namely. The gambler is similar, but since it checks whether a player matches a team, it is possible to get a less straightforward answer. Here I check free and she is not on the werewolf's team, but that still leaves the possibility of her being a zombie or villager, so it might still require a reaction before we can really conclude anything. More interestingly though, we have the violinist, whose information compares with the team of the first player to die in the past night and day cycle. Sometimes you compare against a solo, which renders your information entirely useless, unless we're talking about a bandit or whatever, I guess. More frequently though, we will find a player not mourning someone's death, and this only says that they are not on the same team, but keep in mind, there are four teams usually in Wholesale and thus, you can not always draw conclusions based off that. For reactionary informers, we also have a couple to add, specifically Mortician and Sheriff. Mortician gets information by clicking on a dead player starting night 2 and will get potential killers of that player. I checked Force Body, who was killed by the SK. The autopsy gives 5, 9, and 12 as potential killers. This is useful. But we still need more reaction from these players to find out who is the most likely to be that sneaky killer, hence a reactionary informer. The sheriff is very similar, but instead of checking after the death, you need to watch players and, for the sake of getting information, hope they die. When that eventually happens, you get two suspects. In this example, the suspects are 1 and 5, so let's share it and see how they respond. One claims Forger and 16 even counterclaims one. Five claims doctor, of course we don't know yet who is real, but this info caused a major reaction in village. But what about the other informers though? Red lady and spirits here. Well, hold up, I will pull the detective back too. These three roles namely have varying strategies to get either affirmative or reactionary information. These three roles sit in the middle of the spectrum. Why? Well, as red lady, you can either say I will visit X and Y player or you can say a specific player. Both can be useful. Here, right before nighttime, I say I visit 13 or 14. In fact, I visit 13 and I die, meaning 
that the village now knows that there is at least one evil amongst 13 and 14. The response is that they try to fight for survival and if not, they're most definitely bad. You can also just say you visit a certain player and if you die then, well, it quite literally says it in the village that you visited an evil player and thus they are exposed. Almost as if a seer check them. Similarly, a spirit seer can do single or double checks to provide information. Single checks confirm the identity of a player. In night one here, I ended up doing a single check since 9 died and 2 was blue. Seeing as all the evil teams killed, we know for sure that 2 is village or the voting rule. If you perform a double check, like you will in most cases, and it turns out to be red, then once again, the checked players will fight for their survival and claim their roles. 2 and 9 are red in this game, after a werewolf kill, so at least one of them is wolfy. 9 claims sheriff, 2 claims nothing, so 2 dies. Had they claimed, 9 might have died since we were voting for 9 for a long time. And then to come back to the detective. You can play affirmative with this role namely, by comparing a player with a confirmed villager, especially with no wolf shaman in the game. Same team, you confirmed the other player is a villager. Not the same team, you know they are wolf or solo and deserve a shot. So far, which is the informer you like to play most with and why? Maybe you already found the answer based off this insight and otherwise there is another thing that we can add to the spectrum of informers which limits certain roles and adds a skill value too. Namely whether the informer is conditional or unconditional. Yes, can you believe there's even another layer to informers? Well, I certainly couldn't but it is actually true when you think of it. Well, unconditional informers are informers that can get info regardless of what happens. We are not counting on nightmares or other forms of role blocking because all roles are vulnerable to that. But just speaking of raw ability, Seer, Gambler, Aura Seer and Red Lady are absolutely unconditional. You can always check someone or visit. Even if you already know the role or alignment, even if visiting would be dumb, you can do it and you will be guaranteed of a result. Roles that are heavily leaning towards unconditional are detective and analyst. As detective, your only condition is that there are at least two players to check. As analyst, the condition is that you did not check two players with the same aura last night, because then you will have a broken glass and thus no possibility to check. There are four roles that are conditional though. The one is more than the other. First up, we have the mortician who needs dead players to obtain information. Sometimes it does happen that there are no dead players you can check anymore and then you, well, you need to wait for someone to die by a night attack. The violinist is conditional since you also need to have someone who died in the past night or day. And this was a huge issue for the VO before the buff because it only included day kills at that time. Another condition of the VO is that you should not compare with the solo, because if that is the case, well, your info is useless. The spirit seer is conditional too, because you need to stay alive to even get the info, and there needs to be kills, otherwise everyone is blue and that is useless. But by far the most conditional informer is, well, the sheriff, and that is why I think it is such a fun informer too. Your condition is that one of the two players you watch dies. Since you try to obtain information, you want your condition to be met and this requires really good thinking and predicting, aka brain cells. Depending on how skilled you are, you can either meet the condition often and get info, and if you're not good at mind reading, you might suck at this role and have a tough time. So here you have a full look at the informer spectrum. Hi, this is Saturday Night Hypostein with a few quick mentions. I mentioned 10 informers so far, but there are arguably more roles that can gain info. I will play 7 more informers on the spectrum real quick. Pacifist and Vigilant are both extremely affirmative and even more so than the Seer with their review abilities and are also unconditional. Bellringer, Loudmouth and Tough Guy are all affirmative, but also conditional since they need death or an attack. The Seer Apprentice sits in the middle when it comes to affirmative and reactionary because it relies on which role it takes over. It is highly conditional though because it needs an informer to die. 
You could say similar stuff about the Conjurer and Grave Robber, but I think it's a little bit of a stretch to include those in this list. Finally, Fortune Teller is kind of an informer. The info is currently useless, but it does lead to card receivers needing to claim something, so I guess it counts as a reactionary informer. It is quite unconditional though. Is there any rule apart from only Spy that I forgot about? Let me know in the comments. For the question of this video, we can simply answer it with this image. Typically what happens with affirmative informers in game is that a lazy portion of the lobby, often including the evils, will counter roll calls by saying, the seer can check me. That is technically true, because the seer is affirmative, but it still takes time. On the other hand, reactionary informers have a harder time with confirming players, but the fun factor increases. Because whenever the spirit seer gives a red sign, detectives the not equal sign, the sheriff met their condition, you will get claims. You will get conflict and possibly other players are claiming too, because the evildoer is claiming their role and they need to stand up for their own legitimacy. Add to that the conditional and unconditional side of informers and you will see four quadrants. Conditional and affirmative informers are generally speaking more balanced and also weak at the same time. The information itself is good, but you won't always get it, which slows down the village. Affirmative and unconditional informers are typically the strongest roles and also lead to lazy games in which players get confirmed one by one and nobody tends to claim. Reactionary unconditional results in a regular conflict whilst also providing enough to keep the game going. These are probably the best informers for a fun social deduction game, and the detective is a prime example. Finally, reactionary conditional informers best serve as extra informer. The standout role for this quadrant is the sheriff. A good player can keep the village informed, and if no kills happen, then it's probably not a big deal either since the werewolves run into protection or attack the solo or whatever. So yeah, I really enjoyed making this theoretical video. I hope you are better informed about the diversity of the informers we have in Bullsale, how we can define them, and you will very likely be able to form your opinion on what informer you like to play most, but more importantly, what informer you like to have in your game, either as villager or as non-villager. Let me know it in the comments. See ya later. If you loved what you just saw, then make sure to check out this juicy video I have here for you. You can also subscribe and turn on epic notifications to never miss a future upload. My social links, including Discord server, are in the link tree. Link is in the description. I will see you later and don't be a traitor.